3,500 BC, somewhere in South Mesopotamia. When the first words of any language were written on a piece of clay, history was created. But humans were scared. Humans were scared, and humanity began to fear that there would be loss of memory if they start writing things down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the impact of new innovation. Fear follows. Whenever there is new innovation, fear usually strikes in in humanity, and that's exactly where artificial intelligence stands today. More than two-thirds of the humanity fears the advent of AI. But in generations to come, it's going to become something so integral to everyone's life. The father of evolution, Charles Darwin, believes that fire and language are one of the most important achievements in human history. Wherever we have gone in the past, we have taken these two things with us. So in the barrens of the Arctic, when we went there long back, we took with us our own language, and we also took the memory of fire. Let me take you, come, let me, let me bring you back to today's world, where yesterday's Arctic is today's Mars. When a rover at Mars communicates with Earth at the space control station at Houston, it takes 14 minutes for the fastest signals to come from there to here and go back. Can a system that critical wait for 14 minutes of delay because of human uh, delay? 14 seconds are critical in these scenarios. And that's exactly why we would need a system which can intelligently take decisions in real time. And that's where we put artificial intelligence into a rover and send it to Mars. Just like fire and language have been essential tools in the past, artificial intelligence has become an indispensable tool for humanity to not only survive, but also progress into the future. And like we come to the question is, what is AI? What can AI do for us? And, and, and what is the definition of AI? Artificial intelligence is not just learning by the machines or machine learning, as everyone says. It also encompasses computer vision or natural language processing. If you understand this, we have already captured three out of five human senses. Sight, hearing, and speech. Hearing and speech by natural language processing and computer vision gives us sight. But what machine learning does is that it takes in humongous amount of data and processes these inputs in the format that none of us humans can even imagine doing that amount of data. And that is the brilliance of artificial intelligence. The fastest computer today, the summit, can process 200,000 trillion calculations per second. That is 17 zeros after a one in every second. We humans can't even imagine that kind of a number of processing in our brains. And that's what artificial intelligence does for us. And the question then comes is, what is the kind of role that it plays? And in my startup flag of we use artificial intelligence to create a unique public safety platform where everyone involved, you and me, work together continuously in real time to gather an enormous amount of data that is captured in our system. We process this system using our machine learning algorithms, and our custom algos can actually help us predict the safety ratings of every village and town currently in India. And that is what we are only and only being able to do because of efficient use of artificial intelligence. But artificial intelligence is more than just computing data. It has a bigger role to play. Now, the question that we ask is, can AI help us define where we are now and what we are meant to do? And if we talk, and if we see what's being written around everywhere, they say that AI is going to kill jobs and we should not adopt AI. But what I believe is that AI is not going to kill jobs. AI is going to replace jobs. And those jobs that are going to be replaced are only the ones which are redundant 
and are not designed for humans to do. I will reiterate. The key word here is only redundant tasks and tasks which are repetitive are going to be replaced by AI. Let me share some data with you. About, and this is WHO data, official data, on road accidents. 50 million people every year are injured or disabled because of car accidents. This number is three times the number of people affected by cancer every year. Now, which one of you will tell me that driving and humans are good drivers? We are bad drivers by design. We are not meant to drive. We don't have 360 degree vision. We don't know what is the speed or the distance of the objects clearly with a sensor. We are very bad with action times. And we haven't processed not even thousand, maybe millions of process, uh, scenarios that happen on the road. Which means we are not designed to take up the task very well. Hence, autonomous vehicles are not just the need of the hour, they're a very logical next step to getting humans to rid off of very redundant tasks that we are doing at the moment, but we're not designed for. That's what autonomous vehicles have to do for us. And trust me, that day isn't far when you and I will stop imagining sitting at the driver's seat. Interestingly, at Cambridge, my research, my pioneering research was in the field of autonomous vehicle, where I talked about how we can impart emotional intelligence to autonomous vehicles, which are AI-based. Imagine you're driving a vehicle, and a car accident is bound to happen, right? And there are four persons standing right in front of you in the path of the car. So it's a five-year-old girl, it's a teenage boy, it's a middle-aged woman, and there is an 85-year-old man. Our cognitive capabilities are very strong that we can quickly identify these people, and also make a priority list in our head that tells us whom to say first and next. And this happens in split seconds. Now, we, we took a survey, and mostly everyone put the 85-year-old man at the end of the list by the utility of life. Now, we gave a twist to this. We told them, imagine that the 85-year-old man is your father. Now, what do you think happened? Majority of them changed the priority list. And they removed him from the last spot to some spot, I don't know where. But they just put him somewhere in the middle, saying that this is purely because of emotional reasons. Question now is, what happens in a scenario when an autonomous driver or autonomous car is driving the car? And secondly, how do we teach such emotions-based responses to our AI-based systems. They need to be taught the morals of human life and the value of human life. So we fed it with a lot of data. And we, did a, we made a lot of neural networks. And after making the neural network, the AI system that I made gave 96% plus accuracy, matching the priority list by the humans had generated. What does this show? This shows that artificial intelligence is capable of taking decisions in critical scenarios which require human-like responses. That is where emotions matter. But ladies and gentlemen, the moment I start talking about giving more intelligence to artificial intelligence, there is a host of naysayers that come in front of me. And the world number one perceived anti-AI guy uh, is Mr. Elon Musk, who said, artificial intelligence will lead to existential threat human mankind, to mankind, and it's like summoning the demon. And when he says this, he has also founded a company which summons the same demon. The company that he's founded is called OpenAI. He regularly sends artificially intelligent robots to space to accompany his SpaceX astronauts. Now do you not think that Elon Musk is worried about, about these robots turning rogue and going against him? Ladies and gentlemen, it's popular media that suggests he's anti-AI. Elon Musk is not actually anti-AI. He's actually anti-AGI. What is AGI? AGI is the next version of artificial intelligence. 
It's also sometimes called full AI or strong AI. Artificial general intelligence or AGI is a machine that has capability of thinking our own thought. They're capable of doing tasks without any kind of human intervention. It's like saying the system has a view of the world, just like you and I have a view of our surroundings. And they can even think new things. That's AGI. That's not simple AI. Now, for the people worried about AGI getting very intelligent and doing those tasks, I firmly believe AGI will never, ever reach true AGI. What is true AGI? True AGI is it will never acquire the same consciousness that you and I share, that humans have. It will never have the consciousness of a living entity. It will never have the same creativity as humans have. And that creativity is our biggest, biggest strength that will not let these machines beat us. But let's assume that you're still worried. And there are still elements in the, in the media that says that AGI can get rogue and harm us and threaten us. Believe that there we, we should have regulations by governments in every nation to understand the research that is happening in AI and also AGI. And while we have an understanding of what's happening and where this is heading to, we can draw ground rules on how to set up a very secure form of AGI. But if you're not satisfied that we're not going to have true AGI, and even if regulations don't help us, then the third part is that haven't we, humans, learned from our past, where we've committed a lot of mistakes. When we discovered fire, and fire went out of control, we invented the fire extinguishers. When we invented the car, and cars started making car accidents, we made airbags, seat belts, traffic lights. So every time something new has happened in terms of innovation, we know how to take care of it. The only difference with artificial intelligence is, that we can't afford to make a mistake and come back to it. Artificial intelligence is something like launching a, ro a, 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 like a rocket. Because you have to get everything right at a rocket launch before you press that go button, because you cannot afford to have corrective measures once it's launched. Similarly with artificial intelligence, we have to have corrective measures right now. I mean, precautionary measures right now before we launch it. And that's it. That does not mean that we don't use it at all. And even after all of this, if there are still some naysayers there and who are worried about safety, then just, just like fire extinguishers and seat belts, we developers are putting a safety button in the machine, in the, in the source code of these machines, which we can simply turn off if they ever try to misbehave. And just to summarize, we should not be afraid of new innovation that comes in. Two, that uh, these machines only pick up, replace jobs which are redundant and not kill jobs. And number three is that they will never have the same creativity or consciousness that humans have. And these three points brings us to very core questions. What are we as humans really meant to do? Are we really meant to just keep blowing fields that we did long back? Are we meant or designed to lift boulders for construction? Or are we meant to make phone calls at the millions of call centers around the world? Let us just pause and read it. Artificial intelligence is bringing our attention to the, to the grave under, uh, under utilization of our potential. We are still living our lives in a very old-fashioned way, and we need continuous upgradation that is reskilling and retraining of ourselves. Very soon in the future, and centuries ahead, the generations in the future will thank us profusely for bringing in AI because they will not have to work for the long hours that they currently that we do at the moment. But the same future generation will never forgive us. If we stop AI engines today just because we are afraid of the unknown demon, AI is not here to kill us all. Let us welcome AI and evolve better into better 
and more efficient human species that we are designed for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a better future. Thank you.